<laughs> and we're gonna get we're gonna, as we drink this beer, you know, we're just gonna get redder we're gonna and redder. Get redder so. and red. Oh, that's right, I forgot about <laughs> right. that too. All right, so Barb, Hi. it's episode eighteen. I know of our podcast on. Welcome back, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been watching us. I'm Barb. I'm Cynthia. We're from River City Yarns, mm-hmm. a local yarn shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Right, and we're here to talk with to you about all things yarny. Yeah, mm-hmm. and local yarn shop and, and beery. <laughs> Canadian. It's uh, it's summertime. Mm-hmm. It's hot. Alberta is, you know, we're, we're sort of in that zone between the mountains and, and the, the prairies. prairies. And so here in Edmonton, it can get very warm and we get mm-hmm. thunderstorms and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So um, I thought it would be... We just celebrated, you know, Canada Day. Exactly. It's our birthday in Canada. So yep. there's no Happy better birthday. way than to uh, celebrate with Cynthia's favorite beer. <laughs> Main squeeze. Yep. Yeah, by a local Edmonton brewery. Um, and uh, I wanted to ask you, what did you? How did you celebrate Canada mm, Day? That is good. It is good. How did I? Uh, um, mm. I ordered needles from Abby. <laughs> <laughs> you worked. Is that what you're saying? A little bit, uh-huh. yeah. But yeah. then we went out and um, what did we do? We went to church and we came home and we watched a movie. Oh, good. It was wonderful. Yeah. Just yeah. had a together day, yeah. Mario and I. Yeah, it was it was it was warm and um, sort of threatened to rain almost all day, but mm-hmm. didn't quite make it. Yeah, I took our mom to church. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, to say that again. I, I took was our, coughing. I took our mom to church. She didn't oh. she didn't make me go in with her. Oh, but I did take her to church, and then while she was at the service, I I went and did some work too. I'm working on a new workshop for the store, oh. um, so I I was doing fleshing out some. Uh, some objectives and things like that. Wow. And then she and I went to Tim Hortons. And how, how much more Canadian can that be? You celebrate what Canada's birthday. What did you have? <laughs> well, nothing too exciting. Just a, just a bagel. No, a bagel mm. and some coffee. Mm. And she had a breakfast croissant. It was really nice. Mm-hmm. They have good bagels there. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice and fresh. And I some like fresh their coffee. steeped tea, mm. too. Mm-hmm. One yeah. milk and two Splenda. <laughs> All That's right. a different kind of double double, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a single double. Anyway, oh, but just on that note, um, I got back from Wales last month, mm-hmm. and uh, when we were in Cardiff in Wales, uh, Mike and I thought it was really funny because there were two Tim Hortons in Wales, and they were within walking distance of each other. Wow! And the, uh, so I just thought that was really, we had to go in, we had to buy an ice cap. Well, yeah. And I thought it was really funny too because they had a poster explaining what a double double was, yeah. um, which is two creams, two sugar. Right, but um, we, you know, I think we're just kind of born with that knowledge here in Canada. So yeah. it was kind of funny to see the poster. Anyway, happy anyway. Canada Day! Happy Canada yep. Day! Uh, happy Canada birthday to uh, to all of our fellow Canadians! Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so um, what do what, we have to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about whips. Okay. Yeah, and I think you should start. Work in progress is okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, what do I have? I have my knitting back here. Okay. Well, I think everybody knows that I have this love affair with Donna Paliki's Capelet Deja Vu. We Donna's have, a, we have a few samples here in the store. Yeah. Donna's a local yarn shop owner. We met her in um, uh, Chicago, Chicago. Mm-hmm. when we were there in March. Right. And, you know, I ran into Donna again at TNNA. Oh, nice. Oh, and, and hey, she, so just for our viewers, if, mm-hmm. if any of you want to meet Donna as well, um, check out our video podcast called the Chicago Local Yarn Shop Tour. Right. Yeah, it's on our Places to Go People to See playlist. Yeah, we show uh, Donna's shop. It's mm-hmm. called Sister Arts. Yeah. And uh, talk to her a little bit, and she tells people about her background and her community right. that she's in. And that's yeah. where you first spy the capelet deja vu right yeah Yeah. and then um i've knit three of them (laughs) just so yeah just three (laughs) we have uh, my pink one around here somewhere i did one uh my first one i did quite similar to donna's Mm -hmm. she had used uh i believe it was marisol nuna yeah i think that's well that's what you used right i think so i Nuna, Nina, I keep getting those two confused. So, but. so Barb, I'm going to hold you to um, making a commitment mm-hmm. after this podcast. You're going to put those capelets on your Ravelry page. They, well, they are. Oh, it's okay. It's on there already, so people can go look. Good I just you. couldn't remember myself okay. what I'd used. Well, that's all the details. So we'll put a link to your um, project page mm-hmm. on the show notes down below, and then people can see all the different yarns you've used in your right. capelets deja vu. 
Okay. So then I did another one out of Sun Valley Fibers. Mm. We met them a couple years ago in Minnesota. Minnesota. And I picked up some of their merino cashmere nylon. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's sitting around and you're wondering, what should I do with this? So I thought this was the perfect project because I had just, you know, enough to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was worsted weight, which I wanted to try too. I wanted to try seeing if I could just, you know, make the capelet a little bit. Oh. Bigger, warmer, more uh, Canadianize it, I guess. Is the, <laughs> You're anticipating a cool winter, are well, you? <laughs> that would, um, that's always a for sure. Come January, February, March, April, and True. May mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. freezing. So it turned out beautiful. Oh, I just great. changed my needle sizes. I just upped them a little bit. And it is a bigger piece, but it's um, just warm and cozy. feels like a you know, a big hug. It it's looks really nice. It looks great on you. Well, thanks. I mean, both the color combinations that you picked mm-hmm. really, really look good on you. So we'll we'll put some pictures into the podcast okay. to show everybody what we're, what yeah, we're talking so about. Yeah, so then I started another one. We have another beautiful mm-hmm. yarn in the shop, and we're bringing this yarn into next season as well. We loved it so much this year that we're bringing it back. It's from Noro, and mm-hmm. it's called um, the uh, solid colors are called Sonata. Nice. Can I hold that for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Noro has done a little bit of work with... um, This feels so soft, Barb. It doesn't it ever? Yeah. Sonata must have some cotton in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're both blends. They've got a lot of different Mm -hmm. fibers in them. Cotton, wool, uh, silk Mm -hmm. in this Mm -hmm. one. And I believe this one doesn't have any wool. It's got some viscose silk. Right. Uh, I don't have the ball bands with me, but this one is kind of a... Uh, melange, you know, it's different mm-hmm. shades. It almost together. looks like a tweed, you know, where yes. they where they've added in, you know, all the fibers are just sort of spun together. Yeah. So it looks and it looks maybe like they dyed the fibers and then spun them together because right. there's a, that's a nice Nor- cream. That's Noro's thing, right? Right. They just have all these fibers that right. are uh, already dyed and they push them into this big machine. They get spun into yarn. Yeah. And this one's called Kumo. And I love these yarns. Mm -hmm. This um, Two things about it. This single gives you pieces that are thin and thick. Mm -hmm. So they kind of change. On the surface of the work, you'll see um, pieces that are, you know, quite regularly uh, the gauge. And then you'll run into this big section that's chunky. And it's so pretty, I think. And I also like the way that a single, in this case... Provide um, gives the color work sort of a bit of mellowing. Mm. You know, the color work's not um, really vivid. It's you know, there's not there's there's contrast. Right. Uh, but I think having a single, which the Marisol capelet was like, mm-hmm. it had a single and it also had a bit of a halo from the alpaca. Right. And by single, what we're talking about is the fact that the yarn is not plied. Right. So it's a less, sometimes people say it's a less balanced yarn. Sometimes people say it's a more organic yarn because you don't have that um, smoother kind of surface. Mm-hmm. And what you're saying for color work is that it's going to make your stitches, you know, some of the stitches pop a bit more than others, but yeah. also... It gives it a softness, yeah. Cynthia, and mm-hmm. I almost feel like um, it helps blend the colors a little bit. It's like coloring where you've kind of got shading on the edge. Yeah, That's yeah. the best way I have to describe it. That's really interesting. But I'm really in love with it. Yeah. And with this one, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Like if you hold this up to you, okay. um, right at the top of the bust and the top of the shoulders, I think I'm going to stop now and go with a solid color for the bottom. Oh, So more like a yoked sweater. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So this one, I'm just going to try something a little different. I've kind of mixed them up with all three that I have. You are always hacking patterns. (laughs) It's what I do. (laughs) That's really interesting. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's one of those things, too, where you just can't stop. You know, you get going. Yes. uh, it's, it's always one more row before I go to bed. Well, this feels really lovely. And I have to say a uh, shout out to our friend Sandy Price. She came into the store the other day with a sweater that she'd made, a cabled sweater, yep. out of this uh, yarn. And it looked really pretty. And, wow, um, Sandy, I haven't seen that. I'll go look yeah. on your Ravelry page because yeah, I know yeah. you probably put something up there. I think she did hers in green. And, mm. I, you know, sometimes you wonder whether or not a cable or a stitch pattern is going to show up in a yarn that has a bit of texture, and it did. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. that's great. So, 
So yeah, so nice to see other people's projects. I yes. love that. Yes. If anybody else has anything in this and you're local, come by and show us. I'd love to take pictures. Yeah. Or if you're not local, um, send us a picture. Yeah. You can always send us an email or tag us on Instagram. We'd really love to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and Do the other you find thing, you're using Instagram more and more and more. <laughs> You know, I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I... Do you use Ravelry? Sorry, I should say social media. Um, I do... I, I use them all. I, in fact, do my Do you put your projects kids, up there? I try to. Mm -hmm. I try to, yeah. Uh, Ravelry is a really good resource, and I really like having it when I travel. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, you can walk into a coffee shop with Wi-Fi, download a pattern, go to your... Go to your yarn shop, your local yarn shop. Pick out a great yarn and mm -hmm. start travel. Start, start knitting when you're on your on your trip. Yeah, I just so. love that everybody have put, has put so many pictures up there. It's so yes, helpful. It is thanks yeah. to everybody who uses Ravelry. Right, I try. Yeah, but and we are trying to put more of a Ravelry component into our workshops as well, so we can encourage our students if they haven't used it before to to get an account, mm -hmm. and if they if they have used it, just motivate them to put their project progress up. Yeah, because you're, you're absolutely right. It's so nice to click on a pattern that you'd like to do, and then see the other yarns that people have mm -hmm. used. Or see the projects that people have used for that yarn. It's it's wonderful. Yeah. 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 Sometimes when we buy yarn for the shop, you don't always get a pattern with it. Or the patterns that come with it, you think, mm, <laughs> our customers are never going to make that. Right. You know, so I use Ravelry a lot to kind of source out what things people might be making from that yarn. Right. Sometimes it's hard, especially if a yarn is new, because there's nothing on Ravelry yet for it. Right. Uh, but then, you know, you can pick out yarns that are similar, too. Well, so, I have to say, too, Barb, I mean, you're you're probably one of the people that we work with on a regular basis who is always playing with yarn. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm more, I think I'm more of a method knitter. You know, I like, I, uh, I, you know, if you say to me, you know, knit this, I'll knit it. Um, if you say make up a pattern for this, I'll, you know, I'll do that. But I don't, I don't just sit down with yarn and kind of play with it. So, right. you know, kudos for you for doing well, that. Well, yeah. I make a lot of samples too for the store, mm -hmm. right? And I really like to have a yarn run through my hands and knit it up before I buy it. Yes. That doesn't always happen, <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, I th really think that that's the way to go. Yeah. I'd love to do that yeah. going forward if I could. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we were doing that just recently. I've got a um, circular scarf on the go with mm -hmm. some sample yarns that we were test knitting. So, um, so yeah, I figured if I had three full skeins, I might as well make something substantial. Yeah. And it's nice to take with you. I, you know, when I went to have coffee with my friend Catherine this week, I just took, um, I just took my scarf with me cause it's just, Round and round and round, knit, 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 and mm -hmm. you can have a great, great conversation and still play with yarn. Yeah, but it is—it's it, a big job, all the sample knitting. Well, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a, if you're a retail shop owner, you kind of need a team of people to help you out with that. Yeah, and you, a knitting machine. Yeah, but the samples are what what give people, I think, that inspiration mm -hmm. and that motivation. And so all your capelets, deja vu, certainly get a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. All right. So any other whips in your bag? I don't think so. No, I don't have any other work in progress. I've got a couple of samples that I made up, but we'll look talk about okay. those later. Okay. And I don't have a lot of whips either, so this will be fast because okay. I've been doing lots of secret knitting. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I do have whips for that. Too. Right. Yeah. We have our we have our annual advent box that we're we're putting our our finishing touches on, so we've been doing lots mm -hmm. of um, sample sample work for that. We've been hard at work with that, you guys. <laughs> um, not only has Cynthia been making samples and writing up patterns for projects that go inside the box, but the elves have been busy yeah. at work. We're stamping little envelopes and boxes with mm -hmm. a message that says, do not open before such and such right. a date. Yeah. So we have to make 24 of those for all the boxes that we're making. Yeah. And every year we make a few more. <laughs> and we have so, to order in the boxes and we have to order in all the supplies. It's, it is a, it's a big job. It's a huge job, but we've got so much excitement about yeah, it. It's both really fun. From our customers and from our staff mm -hmm. that I don't think we'll ever be able to stop. <laughs> Will we? Maybe that's maybe that's our retirement. We'll be like these little old ladies sitting at you know the North Pole and mm -hmm. our, with our little hats on, and our husbands can be putting Santa's. things together. Yeah, 
<laughs> for the yeah, Advent box. Yeah, it's Please it's Santa Claus. It's a really fun project. So mm-hmm. yeah. So I do have. I think I have two whips. Okay. Uh, that I'll show that you. You can actually show us. Yeah, I can show you, but they're yeah. not from the Advent box. That's right. Okay. That's right. So this one is my. Um, my sweater that I'm making, it's a Bristol oh, Ivy pattern. You showed us this, I yeah. think, a so little I while did, ago. I did, this was this much I did on the plane ride home from wow. um, from London. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so I, I took it with me when I traveled. So this is the body of the sweater. And this I'll, is wool stock, I'll lay it out. Right? And this is wool stock yeah. from Blue Sky. I'll yeah. hold it up for Okay. You. And now, um, now I'm at the part where I'm working on the sleeves. I know everybody says that you want us to jump up and get up to the camera but we'll, we'll insert a picture we'll, we'll that's put just a so much in. easier yeah yeah so these are the sleeves that i'm working on and i'm doing them two at a time oh because, that's a great idea because that's just easier so right? they have cables at the side of the sleeves yeah yeah so the cable the same cable pattern runs up the side of the sleeve and it's actually a um, saddle shoulder uh, design so the the cable will come right up to the neckline. It doesn't Bristol have some really beautiful unique yeah. designs. I'm so excited about yeah, her coming. I know. Here. I I I just I have to get this done so that I can wear it when she's here. This I wonder was... if maybe this might not fit you. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> I'm what do you going guys to the think? gym every every day oh. I, and drinking beer afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the last sweater that you knit, it didn't quite fit true, you, remember? And true. and I have these really nice big sh- football shoulders. Yeah, that's not what's big. <laughs> Barb, Barb so has, Cynthia gave it to me. Barb has a mm-hmm. Barb has a great figure for the other oh. uh, sweater. So I'm hoping this yeah. one will look better on me because it's a little bit of a raglan design, which doesn't look on doesn't look as good on <laughs> bustier folks but <laughs> i think will look really good on me so we'll see yeah i'm gonna stretch girl, the heck out of it if it doesn't it's fit an me. easy way to get you know a little more busty <laughs> and our viewers can probably tell you how that's done but there's lots of ways to do that so that's uh. not an that's not an excuse <laughs> i don't think i have enough socks in my sock jar <laughs> Um, and then uh, we were doing. We did a class on the quintessential cardigan from um, uh, Church Mouse Yarns yes, and Tea, yes. and that was and a you great did class. Yours out of Elspeth Levold. So yeah, cool. I love this yarn. In fact, we're we're sort of sitting now, slightly in front of it. Do we have this yarn on the website? Uh, I don't think we do. You don't think we no, do? Okay. No. So we, it, this is one of these ones that is yeah. one of our core yarns. Yeah. It's, so this is a whip oh, that uh, that I started. I mean, the color is really pretty. Now, the funny thing about this one is that um, I started the second front. So yep. Barb was holding here the back and one finished front. Mm-hmm. I started the second front, and then I got a really close look at the first front, and I realized that the front is shorter than the back. So I do have to rip it back a little bit oh, just to the you just mean to the, the armhole. Of this part yeah. is shorter. Yeah, oh. I'm gonna rip it back to the armhole and then and then knit it again. So I just want you to know that it happens to everybody. You know, you, it does. You drink you know. enough beer, and one side <laughs> just ends up shorter than the other. So it could even not even have anything to do with beer. <laughs> it could just be because you've you know got on a mojo and you're right. like just roaring through the knitting. Well, my error on this one is that there are a few short rows in the front and the back, which oh. are, help the sweater to hang nicely. Mm-hmm. And uh, but when you count, when there's short rows involved, and you count, you either have to count all the pieces through the short rows or count all the pieces outside of the short rows, but you can't make one can't counting the both. short rows and one not counting the short right. rows. So that's what so happened there. So is this it? It's only an inch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so, so it's, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And you don't a, have to rip out the back. Right, right, absolutely. Right? Just yeah. the front. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to do that, which means that this whip may, may take a little bit longer to finish than... You guys, this yarn has been around for a long, long time. We've had it, I think, almost as long as our store has been open. Mm -hmm. Elspeth Lavold Silky Wool is beautiful. Yeah. It makes the nicest sweaters. It does. I think there's several people in our group that use that yarn. Well, our friend Catherine loves it. Yeah. She, if she's going to do a sweater, she often comes and picks that one. And you and can one use of the it. girls in the workshop did it. Yes. Yeah. Two of them actually. I think you're right. Yeah. 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 The, the yeah. young girl with um, 
kind of taupe colored sweater that was yes. so pretty. Yes. I've got some pictures from the from our last gathering. So oh. I'll pop those in here too. So okay, you can great. see some finished sweaters and some unfinished sweaters together and some varieties of yarns. Yeah. 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 And we'll have to pop that one on our website too if yeah. anybody wants to make one. Yeah. Quintessential cardigan from Church Mouse. Yeah, yeah. We'll put it in the show notes. So mm -hmm. no worries there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's I think that's, that's pretty much it for for works in progress. All right. Yeah. So just before we get into whips, Barb, there's one more. I mean, into finished objects. There's one more whip that I want to add to my list. Okay. Um, Sheila, mm -hmm. Mc, Sheila McDonald, one of our staff. Um, She's our brought, store manager. One of yes, she brought mm -hmm. this in oh, when Richard beautiful? DeVries was here, and I thought I have to make this. This is so pretty. This is called Close to You. Yeah. It's by Justina Lorkowska. Yeah. And this one's done in Pepino. Yeah, in Richard DeVries Pepino. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I think Sheila said she made it a little bit longer than the pattern had, mm -hmm. uh, had I think called for. I ended up finishing about there, and she just kept going a bit. Yeah. And so um, so she used three skeins. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Want to try it's just, it on? I, I did when, when, uh, when Richard was here, and I just loved it. Isn't that perfect? It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just enough lace detail to make it interesting, you know, yeah. and, but yet not overwhelming when you're knitting. Well, and you know what? I'm not a huge lace knitter. I, I really don't want complicated patterns. Mm -hmm. um, if possible, I'd like to carry it around and just work on it, well, you know, you know. make it intuitive. And I, I, I really feel like this is that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the color that Sheila picked is so pretty. I like that shape, too. Mm -hmm. You know, a crescent shawl is really nice. It gives you kind of enough that you can kind of drape over mm -hmm. without it being so overwhelming. Right. You know, how or, many shawls can you right. physically wear right. and store in your closet? Yeah, and you have no, you know, you don't have that huge amount of bulk right, right. down in the front of your, of your mm -hmm. <laughs> that that bib, you know, yeah. of of yarn. This is yeah. perfect, and I I like the little, you know, like the little angles that you get on it because I think that looks really, mm -hmm. um, really dressy. You know, I, I yeah. want to make one of those too. So yeah. are you going to make one? I am. I am. I got a, I was thinking I might make it in Richard DeVries Pepino colorway cake because I have oh. an Anne Bud skirt made out of Pepino in that colorway. In that colorway. So I thought it might be, you know, very That's coordinated of me to have a, have a mm. shawl and a skirt that match. And then when uh, Anne Bud comes here for the Knit for Fun retreat this fall, I'll have something by Anne, something by Justina, something by Bristol, um, and I'll have Carson's book. <laughs> and, and what do I have? I have three capelet deja vus. <laughs> hey, no, no, you have an Anne Bud skirt too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. So we just have to do a, a shawl and mm -hmm. then maybe a, a brioche project by Bristol. Oh. I have to take this off because it is it is July here brioche. and it is warm. It, I took two classes from Brist Bristol on brioche mm -hmm. and Bristol. And you're an I'm a, now. I'm going to be a student of yours forever <laughs> because there's no. I don't think I can do bri brioche. It's oh, just, you can, you can. I have the pattern for you too. It's not something that. In, that I'm inspired oh, to do. Isn't, isn't that this, terrible? Well, it's not terrible. It's just interesting. I mean, here you are yeah, doing no. all this fair isle. I love stranded color work. Color work. Yeah. color work is my thing. Yeah. But brioche, mm -hmm. I mean, color work brioche interests me a little bit. Mm. But I just, I'm just not all about, you know, going down into that row below. and Right, right. I well. just think it's a... Recipe for disaster for me. <laughs> she showed us how to fix mistakes too. So, she did. you know, those of you who are coming to the Knit for Fun retreat, um, or if you haven't, oh, you know, yeah. Believe it's, me, I'm not discouraging anybody else <laughs> from doing brioche. Yeah. It's just, you know, not yeah. my thing. Yeah. So, on to finished objects, mm -hmm. but back onto the topic of um, crescent shawls. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell us about a new sample that we had made. Oh, up. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I was also in the same workshop as Cynthia with a quintessential cardigan. I picked two yarns for it. Both of them did not work. They were too thick. My cardigan ended up looking like, you know, a, I think I told people, a bomber jacket. Like a, you know, a leather. <laughs> I looked like a biker. Your gauge was off. It, oh, terrible. So I didn't want to waste the yarn. So I, I made this one here. Mm -hmm. This is our um, stargazer pattern. So this is from Holly Yo, 
And this pattern is so pretty. Should we pull it off? Sure. Let's just just a little bit. If you can hang, pull that up your way. Yeah, yeah. So it's got diamonds along the bottom. It's a crescent. It's a big crescent. We normally knit this in worsted weight with our Epic yarn. And it's it's got kind of like uh, lines that run down it in garter um, with some diamonds at the bottom. But this one's done in Julie Aslan Lizu DK. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because it really broke up the patterning. Like the yarn has... Um, just a soft sort of transition between burgundies and pinks, but there's light and dark shades to it. And I don't know if you can see that. But it's a semi-solid, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <clears throat> but when I did my sweater, you could kind of see little patches of burgundy or darkness in the pieces mm -hmm. of the sweater. You got the pooling. Right, right. I did. I got a little bit of pooling. But here, when you've got such a large uh, span, you don't really see this at all. It really breaks it up. There's a, just a little bit of darker area down here. Um, but um, this feels like a million dollars. It does. Julie's it does. yarn is a blend of merino, silk, and cashmere. Mm -hmm. And it's lovely. Yeah. So four balls. That's what this one took. Okay. And we were done. And it's a it's a generous size shawl. So it's no matter you know you know no matter whether you're um, you have a narrow frame or a wide frame doesn't matter if you're busty or not busty. Um, you can take this this shawl mm -hmm. and wrap it around you and and it looks I don't know I I think it, it makes you look like Claire from Outlander. You know? Oh yeah, it's, it's it does very, have a it's very romantic. It's very yeah. romantic. It's mm -hmm. soft. It's flowy. I yep. think the silk in the yarn gives it a lot of drape. Mm -hmm. And it's a piece that, you know, everybody can wear. You can wear it whether you're, you know, whether you want to wear it as a shawl or whether you want to wrap it around and wear it more as, you know, a, a piece close to your right. skin. Yeah. You can wear it over top of a coat in the wintertime. It's pretty versatile. Mm -hmm. it's, Holly's done a great job with the pattern, too. Holly's patterns are fabulous. We yeah, love Holly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to take that one to Knit City. Yeah, so we're going to Knit City in September. Mm -hmm. And uh, Julie will to, be there, too. Right. We're going to hang out at Holly Yo's booth in Knit City mm -hmm. and um, and then visit with friends, take some classes. So Play with if any Holly. Of you are, if you, any of you are coming to Knit City, do stop by Holly's booth and say mm -hmm. hello to us. It's it's been really fun. I, you know, we get the, we get the occasional person who comes into the store and says, "I watch your podcast," and I just you know makes me feel so good. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's, uh, interesting. S such a great community, right? right. Brings mm -hmm. people together. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. What so else? Other do you have finished anything? objects? Um, I don't have I don't have anything. And I'm so I'm just looking at my notes here, mm. and of course my iPad isn't cooperating. Do um, you want to talk about the um, oh, store sample? We want to talk about Wanderlust. Yeah. Yes, yes. Here, talk about that. So this is um, a new collection from our friends at Handmaiden mm -hmm. in Nova Scotia. Thanks, Jenna. <laughs> they um, they had a really really good success with the Canada one hundred and fifty parks. parks collection last year mm -hmm. on Canada's one hundred and fiftieth birthday. Jenna and her team came out with. 13 colorways that were inspired by national parks in one, each of our provinces and territories in, yeah one in each of the provinces and territories and i think they had a really hard time picking one <laughs> because there were so many beautiful places right. and parks but they did it and then they made colors that inspired uh those parks mm -hmm. they've done the same thing this year with beaches and um, islands and vacation spots yeah Kind of like destination locations, mm -hmm. and they all have a special reason for being that that destination. Yeah. And but then, uh, and they did it on three different bases. Mm -hmm. We picked Fliss, mm -hmm. Fliss, which is Fliss, which is silk. I think sixty five percent and thirty five percent nylon linen. Oh, sorry, you're right, linen, mm -hmm. silk and linen, yeah. silk and linen. Yeah, and it's it just feels gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The the silk in there is silky and the linen in there gives it that mm -hmm. kind of um earthy feeling that um oh and the here's strength. one yeah mm -hmm. here's one knit up so this one was um Looks key like, west yeah that's right so key lime pie mm -hmm. beaches and you can see in this swatch um some really neat little slubs 
Here yes. the linen, I believe that is, or maybe it's the silk. Probably the silk, right, mm -hmm. Cynthia? Yeah, probably. Uh, it doesn't take the dye. And so it's got these little slubs that show up on the surface of the work. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. I wh whipped these up on my knitting machine mm -hmm. just to show kind of what they look like. And in, I think this was 100 stitches, it had a stripe effect to it. Yeah, which was that's so really cool. interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then this one is called Trinidad and Tobago. And that's I think so Sheila funny. said she's been to both of these places. <laughs> well, that's it. See, it seemed like when people were coming in to um, purchase the yarn that mm. they were picking either a place they'd like to go or a place that they had been, they had to, been to, or um, or they just loved the color. Well, yeah. yeah, and you know, and the feeling. I love these. There's a few neutrals in this line too. This one's called. I don't think these ones are named, oh, so you have to. Darn. So we'll have to look at the big skeins. These ones are 50 gram skeins. This one's a collection, so you get um, one of each colorway. There's 13 colorways, and they're fastened together with a big elastic and a handmade button from Nova Scotia. Um, so this is one of each, and they're, they're sold as a collection. But you can also buy a 100 gram skein mm -hmm. in individual colors. Right. Yeah. So here's a few. How do you say that one? Oh, I'm going to say Ishigaki. It looks Japanese. It does. Yeah. Look at this, you guys. There's blues in here and mm -hmm. creams and peaches. It's so pretty. Yes. And this one's? This one is Malta. Malta. Mm -hmm. So top of Africa? Um, I, think Malta. I think it's around, I think it's actually in the Mediterranean. Get out our... Because Malta's been in the news recently. Oh. Migrants and boats and things okay. like that. Yeah. Yeah. To get out our world atlas. <laughs> this one I know. Yeah. Maui. Maui. Yeah. Been there a few times. Yeah. Love that's, this. That's really pretty. Isn't it pretty? This mm -hmm. is just like the flowers. Yeah. So this is perfect for um, hot weather knitting. Mm -hmm. Whether you're, you know, doing something for the summertime or whether you're... Um, taking a vacation and you want to have a nice um, cellulose type library uh, I guess it's not cellulose a uh, silk and um, cellulose fiber, fiber to take with you yeah um, silk. this is great and then um, Handmaiden did up a pattern or they showed mm -hmm. a pattern for a really pretty beach cover-up that mm -hmm. I think took four or five skeins depending on what size yeah. you're going to do um, so you can buy this on our website. We're selling these skeins mm -hmm. individually, the 100 gram. Yeah. Or you can buy it as a collector bundle. Yeah. And these were really popular last year. People can buy all 13 of them. Yeah. And it comes with a special handmade button that they've mm -hmm. made in Nova Scotia. Yeah, I did talk about that already. Yeah. Um, and yeah, a collector's sort of item. I yeah. think we have three left. Two or three. Yeah, maybe maybe two. Two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and we just told people to email info at rivercityyarns.com mm -hmm. if they want one of those. Yeah. 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 This is really nice. Okay. Yeah. We love, love, um, love those Canadian dyers, especially handmade. And they do, they do such a beautiful job of dyeing sure yarns. do. I'm just going to keep that little bundle here close to me. Okay. <laughs> now, you probably wanted to chat a little bit about Liz, right? Yeah. And I have to take this off because I'm getting <laughs> too hot. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll insert some photos. Our, mm -hmm. um, one of our lovely shop assistants um, graduated from university and went off to Germany to pursue her master's. We really think of her like our daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, she worked with us since she was like 13 or 14. Right. Yeah, yeah. And um, she just became a big part of our family. Absolutely. And we have another one who's, who's graduating mm -hmm. from high school now. And we sort of feel like... Like we have partial pride in her success, right? And yeah. Pangs too, you know, like when they leave home and they have to go mm -hmm, to school. Mm -hmm. and that's how we felt about Liz. <laughs> yeah. So Liz has gone to Germany, and when she left, because we we had this sort of ongoing deal with her that while she was yeah. in Germany, she would edit our newsletter, and then when she'd come back to visit for the holidays, we'd bring her in and give her some shifts in the store. But she's she's pretty much moved to well, Germany and now. And she's become so smart. This girl's yeah, got yeah. taking a master's. She was always smart. I know. She's just yeah. developing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, when busy. she left, we gave her a gift. Um, we asked her to pick a project from, mm -hmm. from the shop and, and to pick out the yarn. And, and the color uh, that yeah, she wanted. Yeah. She picked a beautiful yarn. Yeah. 
So she um, she sent us some pictures of her finished project, which was very thoughtful, mm-hmm. and we'll uh, we'll insert some pictures here. Yeah, and then uh, she's also a weaver. She's an amazing weaver. Mm-hmm. She, I think she took her loom with her. I don't to... think she did because she has oh. a floor loom. Okay, I think she got a knitter's loom to take did with she? her. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. So she weaves, mm-hmm. and she we- she wove several shawls, mm-hmm. and I got kind of first pick, and I love this color <laughs> yeah. and this shade. It's gorgeous. So Liz w- wove this, mm-hmm. and I wear it all the time. It also kind of s- double does double duty on the end of my bed. Oh yeah. So yeah. when I want to change up the colors in my bedroom, it's all sure. white. Yes. This you know I'll, I'll do a pink. I have a turquoise. Kind nice. Of what a great one. idea. And, yeah. 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 So thank you, Liz. I always think of you when yeah. I wear this. Yeah. Cheers, Liz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Liba Liz. Liba Liz. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. So you nice. said you wanted to go see her. I do. She suggested a, she suggested a time, so I have to see. It's in she the fall. Did? Yeah. Oh. So fall's a little bit, as, as yarn shop mm-hmm. owners, right, fall's a little bit of a hard time to get away because yeah. the run-up to Christmas is really busy. But, you know, you never know. Um, there's some really good uh, flight deals. I to think it's actually Germany. my turn to take a vacation because, you know, this one went to Wales for a month. You don't want to go to Germany without me. <laughs> oh, I suppose you'll have Liz. <laughs> Get around just fine. I was hoping I'm going with somewhere with my husband. But <laughs> what? Instead of your sister? <laughs> Who are you going to have more fun with? Oh, wait. <laughs> I won't make you say that on a podcast. <laughs> so bad. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Sisters. Do we have more um, samples to show? Oh, or? That beard just hit me, Barb. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to sweat now. Um, no, we. I don't think we have more uh, finished objects. So let's talk about what's new in the store. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'll take off my I was, sweater. I was going to talk about this finished object, <laughs> but I'll put it Did away. Did you knit that? Yeah. Oh, well, show us. Show us. Because this is a new yarn as well, isn't it? This is a brand new yarn. We don't even have it on the shelves yet. It's a yarn from Haiku. Uh, It's baby alpaca. And it's called O! Exclamation mark. O-H! Exclamation mark. And as soon as you... Because when you hold it, that's the first thing you say. you touch it. Oh. (laughs) It is. You know why. It is definitely an O. Oh, my God. I wish there was some way, you know, you you could pass that tactile... Feeling. Feeling uh, through through photographs and uh, video images, and there isn't. But let me just say, this feels like um, this feels like putting and marshmallows. In she your hand. she has been drinking a fair amount of this. <laughs> um, it just feels so soft and Doesn't squishy. It? Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. So is this knit double stranded? No, single. Oh. And it's a chainette construction, which we have actually mm-hmm. a little bit of a hard time selling here in our shop. People look at chainette construction and they think, oh. I don't like this. I don't want this to show up on the surface of my work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it doesn't. It doesn't no. it, this looks just like regular, you know, yarn. Mm-hmm. Um, the advantage of chainette construction is yeah. that it's hollow. It's so light. So you get this chunky yarn, but it's really light. And it holds the warmth because that hollow fiber, mm-hmm. just like um, just like caribou, right? Right. So um, while it's July and, you know, we're not really appreciating <laughs> the warmth of this... The come, softness is amazing. Come February, mm-hmm. this would be my favorite piece. Yeah. I'll be wearing this all the time. I really like the pattern that you've got I know. in there. Because that, that accentuates the the fluffiness of the of the design as well. The pattern was another reason why I bought the yarn. Mm-hmm. Because I like to have a pattern or a sample to showcase a yarn. Right. And this one was so cute. It came mm-hmm. with the, you know, the ridges. And here's how you're supposed to wear this. So it's... <sighs> It's looks, worn as a cowl, yeah. right? But Diane had it, and in the picture they have it, where they just bring the back up, and so it's worn as a hood. That looks really cute on you. Does it look cute? It does. And it, it goes down over the back right. of your neck, so right. it protects your neck too. Mm-hmm. And there you go. So you yeah. can wear it two ways. That's really cute. And you can probably turn it inside out as well. Well, I don't think so, because I think you'd probably... Well, if you wanted to see the lines, you mm-hmm, could. Mm-hmm. I've got a little bit of um, carry up on the side. Oh, okay. So right here on the inside, you can see that. Right, right. 
Right. Yeah, which isn't the prettiest. You just but put the, that at the back of your The neat neck. thing, Cynthia, was when I was knitting it, you're knitting it like this. Like this is your right side when you're knitting. Okay. And you're carrying up. And I think it's just so that you can kind of see when you're changing knitting and purling. Right. But then when you turn it to the wrong side, it's this perfect. one is your public side. Yes. So the pattern was written really neat, too. Yeah, yeah. So this is on Ski Cell's website. It's a free pattern, and it's on Ravelry as well. Oh, perfect. And it's called? Um, I forget. We'll put it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gives you an excuse to look at the show notes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's really Great pretty. Great project, though. Two skeins. There's Very also um, a Grello one, like gray and not yellow. Mm -hmm. Oh. So pretty. They call it Grello? Well, I think so, that cool. color. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And um, there's also one with, like... Um, a dark navy and a white. There's some really beautiful color combos. We're going to be carrying this another week or two. Very nice. And I see uh, you brought back something that's really, it's been really popular, but yeah, we haven't had this for a while. Right. The company actually went away. Oh. They were very popular a few years back. This I'll is open one up. the knit kit. So this kit has every kind of tool that a knitter or even a crocheter would want to have. And the company, um, like I say, they went away about two or three years ago. We couldn't get these anymore. I think they had issues in production. Hmm. They had a few quality issues. And so the company has now been bought out by new owners. Yeah. They've, they still, I believe, are making the shell of this offshore. But they're all put together and quality checked in the USA. Hmm. And that so was the... Yeah, I met with the owners of the company, and she, when I was talking to her on the phone, you could hear this in the background. They were pulling out tape measures. I think they do the IKEA thing, where you test, oh. you <laughs> test every component and every part 150 yeah. times. See or how something? many times you can do it. Yep. So there's a row counter on here. There's a little uh, yarn cutter on that here. That is so handy, too. I used that on the plane when mm -hmm. I was flying down there. Yeah. I have one of these. There's a little crochet hook for picking up stitches. And I like what they've done on the back here. There's um, there's a needle gauge built into it. So this little, um, I won't open it because there's a sticker on here. And that's that's probably for good reason because you don't want parts to fall out. But if you open this up, um, there's a needle right. gauge on the back of here. And inside like how here, many times have you been stuck where, <laughs> you know, you think, what? Kind of what size needle is this that I'm using? Right. Well, it probably doesn't happen to you, but it does. It, it does to in me fact, all the time. In fact, everywhere I go, I buy needle gauges and I put them in each of my project bags because absolutely the mm -hmm. the the ink wears off the side of your needles. And yeah. what do you do? And this is one <clears throat> kind of tool that has everything in it that you're going to need right. when you go away. Point protectors, stitch markers, folding scissors, and they're all TSA compliant. Yeah. So you can take this on the airplane with you and not worry about breaking any um, scissor length rules right. or anything like that. Yeah. And we've got them in two colors. Mm -hmm. We've got them in violet and... And in teal, teal. really pretty teal blue. Mm -hmm. So that's really great. I'm glad to see those back. Oh, and then this bar. It's another new product that we have. I love this. You know, we always talk about how we're such Addy girls. Mm -hmm. And we are. We are. We are very much Addy girls. However... Chiagu also makes a needle that we're really fond of, especially when we're doing socks or projects mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. smaller. Uh, Addy doesn't have yet the interchangeables in this size, um, but Bar. who knows? I'm sure they, they are coming out with some really special things too. This is so cool. Yeah, so I just love the small size. You of want this. to talk about that? So yeah, so the, these are um, these are the needle tips. Now They're look so how tiny. tiny those are. Maybe That's two and a half inches or three, three inches. I think this looks like it's three inches. And then this one is oh, I know. A baby they size. They look like needles. And both of these tips that Cynthia just showed you are in the same size. So this is the two millimeter. This set goes from two millimeter to three and a quarter. Three point seven five. Mm -hmm. So you've got every size in between one, there. So six tips in the two inch size and six of the same size in the three inch size. And then right. how many cords come uh, with this? Three cords three come cords. with this. So, so you can make a circumference that spans from nine inches 
to 14. Oh, so those of you who like to knit your socks on one circular needle, mm -hmm. this is the set for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I see they've made them a little bit bigger. So yeah. you can go up to three and a quarter. So if you want to do, you know, sport weight socks, you can. Or, or mittens. worsted weight even, probably with like, a 375. Uh, 325. Oh, 3.25. Okay. But yeah, I mean, if you want if you want something that's really cozy and dense, um, mm -hmm. keeps the wind out, for sure, knit it on a smaller needle. And the um, other thing that's really cool about these is that on one end, you could use the short one, the two mm -hmm. inch or three inch, and on the other end, you could use the longer one. Right. So now you've got a size nine, a size 10, a size 11. It goes up by one inch increments all right. the way. Whereas other needles make an 8 or a 12 right, or right. a 16. Yeah. So this is very nice. And I, I love this packaging. Right. I mean, you were saying. Slip this into your into your knitting bag. Take it through. I took my Chiagu, my other ones, through airport security when Did I traveled you? to Wales. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No problem at all. They, they were so efficient. Oh, and look at this. That was the set that I got taken away in Mexico. It was my Chiagu. Oh. Don't take knitting needles out of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Take them into Mexico, in. just put them in your in your um, check Very, baggage mm -hmm. for yeah. Yeah, but Europe, no problem. <laughs> so there's yeah. another uh, needle gauge yeah. for you. So and there's some end caps, some stitch markers and some little um, T pins that you can use for tightening mm -hmm. on because the one, you know, what I, I sort of consider to be one downside of these Chiagu uh, needles is that they are screw on. Yes, they And are. so, you know, people complain because they, they, they do come unscrewed eventually, but these tightening tools work really well. So you slip one in the needle and you slip one in the cord and you twist them together mm -hmm. and they, they, uh, the metal on metal connection is pretty good. You just have to be careful you don't over twist as well. You have to be <laughs> gentle with them. Well, unless you want them to be permanently fixed together right? yeah 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 so I, I do find when I use mine that every now and then I start to feel it catch on the fiber and that tells me that the needle has started to come unscrewed a little bit I just push the fiber back and tighten it up and it's all good mm -hmm. to go yeah but I love the small size the of compact this. nature yeah. of it yeah, yeah. that's Very nice. really cool yeah we're going to talk about KFF right yeah knit which for is fun. knit for fun retreat yeah. and that's our special fall um, event event with Ann Bud. Right. We do, every year we've done sixteen of them. Well, we've done sixteen of our own retreats, mm -hmm. but uh, this last year and uh, this year um, we've this had Ann second. Bud bring her retreat to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it should be. We should just explain a little bit too, mm -hmm. like about how that works. Sure. So Ann does Ann does knitting retreats all over the world. Last year she was in Scotland. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 And she calls us her international retreat. For, well, the first one. The, the first, first one. international retreat was here in Edmonton last last fall. Yeah. And she's coming back because we had such a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And was the editor for Interweave magazine for about 20 years, I think. Yeah. And she's just, she's a beautiful designer. She's a fabulous instructor. She's a beautiful person. Mm, yes. She's so yeah. sweet. And she's well connected. This lady knows everybody that there is to know in the knitting community. It's true. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, you know, we're really good at, we think, at being yarn shop owners mm -hmm. and selling yarn. And Anne and Cindy, her sidekick, <laughs> her organizer, her organizer, mm -hmm. are amazing at events. Mm -hmm. And so last year, the year before, we sat down with Anne and we said, how can we make a marriage here mm -hmm. where we can have you kind of help us bring really talented folks to Edmonton? Right. Because, you know, not everybody here can travel, you know, to Minnesota or Chicago or places to see people like this. So mm -hmm. we really felt that this was our opportunity to bring talent here to Edmonton. Right. So this year, in fact, so this year we are bringing Anne is bringing Anne yeah, is bringing yeah, um, and we're hosting mm -hmm. um, Bristol Ivy and Carson Demers. They're both from the U.S. and Justina Lorkowska from Poland. Right. Justina is a beautiful up and coming up and coming. Or she has come <laughs> yeah. designer. Yes. Um, and she's she's just got some really lovely designs and two books. We um, didn't realize how 
uh, many designs she had until we started knitting some of them. Well, yeah, Cindy said Cindy suggested her as a as an option mm-hmm. for to fill out the um, the instructors, and we we like to kind of check out all the instructors that we bring to Edmonton. Mm-hmm. We like to be able to say to our customers, Four you know, weeks. we've 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 taken a class with her. So you know, we've taken a class with Bristol Ivy, mm-hmm. and of course, we've taken lots of classes with Anne. Um, we know of Carson. We've read his right. book. And- yeah, but if Cindy says that Justina is good, then we we kind of have to go with her. Mm-hmm. And then we started looking at her designs, and yeah, it just it blew me away how yes. much she's published and the fact that she's done designs in you know regular commercial yarns and then hand painted and speckled yarns right you know not there's not all that many designs you know there are a few lots of shawls but she's done other things with speckled yarns mm-hmm. that are really interesting sweaters and hats mm-hmm. lots of accessories and there's i think there's kind of a romantic love story there too mm-hmm. because the yarn the dyed yarns that she uses come from her husband yes he has a company called Martin's Lab yeah and, and it sounds chatting. to me from some of the things that she said about her patterns that he started dyeing yarn in order to spend time with his wife Isn't and doesn't that, that romantic? Sound romantic yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're really excited to be able to meet Justina mm-hmm. when she comes here in October, end of October. Um, there are, um, I think, a few seats left. I think so. So Last if you, time, I think there was like 10 or maybe, 9. something yeah. like that. So if you want to um, if you want to join us, and we think you really should, mm-hmm. um, go, you can go to our website, rivercityyarns.com um, slash events. And we have the event there. And from there, there are links to Anne's website. Mm-hmm. If you want to register or get more information. You'll actually register through Anne. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's handling all of the registration, um, you know, the booking of the hotel, all of the flights, payment and everything. flights of the instructors. Yeah. She handles all of that. Our commitment is to create a marketplace mm-hmm. and to help you come to our shop and, and to shop. Yeah. I think Mario agreed this year he'll do the shuttle again. Right, yeah, that was really nice. Um, you, you go to the, the Hilton Doubletree and you stay there for the weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, Barb's husband, we rent a van and Barb's husband yeah. will uh, do hourly trips back and forth between the store and the hotel. It is it walkable. It is walkable, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, in the end of October, weather's really unpredictable. And we know that lots of our, lots of our folks have mobility issues too. So we want to make that journey really comfortable. You might have time crunch issues. You might mm-hmm. only have, you know, a couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> we know two hours in a yarn shop is really, you know, it's not Tight. enough time to explore, Sometimes. is it? <laughs> so we're going to try and bring some things and some um, vendors and some makers to the uh, Hilton Doubletree as Great. well. We're working really hard on those relationships Great. and getting those up. Right. So. And um, we know, because we travel a lot, mm-hmm. how um, annoying it is to get to a place and want to buy a hard a copy book. of the book and and get the, um, you know, the author to sign yeah. it while they're there. That's but, part of the whole event, right? right. And yeah. the magic of coming yeah. to an event. Well, then I, I was really disappointed when I went to see Arna and Carlos because I have all of their books. Right. There's like eight of them. And I couldn't take them all with me. I had to right. pick one. So what we're doing is we're allowing people to pre-order books. Right. We'll have them here for you. You can pick them up at the retreat. You can get the um, Mm -hmm. author to sign them, and then you can take them home with you or leave them with us, and we'll ship them home for you. And, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, even if you aren't coming to the retreat but you live here, you might have a book um, or you might want to come and buy one, we're going to ask Carson and Anne and Bristol Bristol and Justina if they would sign extra copies of their books and leave them with us Mm, right so that we can have a few too afterwards right we usually try to do like a a public event during and so we'll talk to Anne about that too Mm -hmm. but that gives you know people who can't come to their cheat but are here in Edmonton want their books signed to they can come on Mm -hmm. at a special event okay well we've got more work to do on that so um, Anne has a lot of books Mm -hmm. Um, I just I I brought out I, I brought out three or four sorry um because there are a lot of books mm-hmm. so if you go to our website you'll see them all you'll see them all we we sold out of a few of them like we don't have her sock right. book which is very popular but we have 50 more coming okay now this one is my favorite book this is my, one mm-hmm. of her oldest i think because uh, i got this i got a copy of this one um 
uh, when we had our store downtown. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I use this book a lot. This All is, the time. This is a book of, um, it's a book of patterns. I yeah. won't go into it any more than that. You can read the description on the website. I also have this book. This is the Handy Book of Sweater Patterns. Mm -hmm. I have all her books. Um, and I love this one. This is the Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters. I will just say one thing about the Handy Book is that it's multi gauged mm. and multi yarns. So whether you have, you know, chunky yarn or fingering weight yarn in your stash, you can knit these patterns out of this book. Right. And, you know, we won't go into it now, but um, there's great little tools that Anne's created too to help you with charts. Right. Figuring now, that out. On that, I, I did buy this book as an ebook version from Interweave oh, yeah. a long time ago. Um, but I I prefer the, for this kind of knitting, I really do prefer the book. You because guys, the other thing about this book is look at this coil. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cynthia and I both take our books to Staples and have them take off the spine and mm -hmm. put this in. Because with a reference book, this is really what you want. You want it to lay flat, right? Or to sit in a stand so that you can work with it. Mm -hmm love these yeah and um and then this is another one this is a soft cover book and this is another example of Anne's work so this is a compilation mm -hmm. she's brought in different designers to contribute to her her concept and her yeah. idea and um she's been knitting her way through this book if you follow um follow her on her, her website blog. um she's re-knitting each of these socks mm -hmm. in different yarns so that's kind of a, a really cool adventure that Anne's on now you should do those ones on the cover in I, this sh I, sh I should I should. There's a, there's some other ones in here that I I would like to do too. Yeah. There's, so this one's all innovative sock techniques. Uh, so socks not knit from the cuff to the toe or the toe to the cuff, but maybe knit sideways or maybe knit. Um, I don't know. Maybe you start with a heel and then and then do build your sock around that. I'm going to be got? very fast because we're under a time constraint. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, do these ones first. Okay. Bristol Ivy. So what can we say about Bristol? Love Bristol. And Bristol, your book is brilliant. I've flipped this from cover to cover. And the whole idea about creating my own shawl is definitely where I want to go. Right. And you've given us, given me tools in order to do that. I love the way you piece sections together. It's brilliant. And this book is hardcover, but it does come with a download code. So. Right. But you want this book, you guys. Mm -hmm. This is the nicest book that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. The cover is made out of a linen fabric that's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. The pages are all gilted on the edge, like so that you can find different sections. The photography's amazing. Yeah. And the quality is like second to none. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Everybody should have that book. And everybody should have this book. Mm -hmm. I just, what can you say? What yeah. can you say? I mean, I love books. And the fact that Carson has wrote a book that's going to help all of us knit into our 90s. I mean, isn't that where everybody wants to do? You want to be able to have uh, your body cooperate with you so that you can, yeah, as I'm talking, I'm sitting up taller. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. this is what it's all about, is finding the right position, uh, the right way to hold your needles, um, the right patterns to choose, to take breaks. He talks about it all in this book. Right. And gives you, want this one too. gives you an understanding of what your repetitive activity is doing to your body. Yeah. And, and how to keep you, how, how to, to keep you going. Healthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really good. The book itself is heavy, so I won't hold it up for too that's long. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, that's it for knit for fun books. We are waiting for Justina's to right. come. We'll right. put a few pictures in. Justina Lukowska has two books called uh, Tabla Rasa Speckles and Tabla Rasa Neutrals. And she also has lots of single patterns. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, if you want something to take to a book signing, the book is nice, nice to have. Yeah. So we hope that you all think really seriously about coming to yeah, it for join fun us. Mm -hmm. Come and join us. It's going to be so much fun and you're going to learn an incredible amount. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Speaking. nobody's too new. Somebody said to me the other day, I'm a beginner knitter. Can I come mm -hmm. to this? Mm-hmm. I said, yes, yes, you can. Yep. I mean, even if you have to put something in cold storage for a bit, it's okay. You'll mm -hmm. you'll bring it back out. Absolutely. You know, I we've been really blessed with being able to travel and take classes. And I, I think back on some of my rookie mistakes mm -hmm. and some of my rookie classes and things like that. But it, it yeah, absolutely. 
put it put it aside for now. Take notes. Yeah. And then uh, later on, when you you know when you're ready for it, you pull it out and put yeah. it back into your repertoire. I think that's another reason why I'm so thankful I have books because mm. I've pulled out books so many times. Nikki Epstein's 150 block book yes, is my yeah. Bible. Yeah. All right. Here's another Bible. <laughs> Canadian author. I ran into Kate yes. at TNN. Yeah. And this was one of my best finds. This is her new mitten and glove book, and it is filled with amazing patterns. We're bringing in copies of this book as well. I hope that they'll arrive in July, August timing mm -hmm. range. And yep. you have to have this book because this is the best way to use up a few skeins of yarn. Mm. You know, thrummed mittens, patterned mittens. She's got color work, fingerless gloves. She has cabled mittens. Oh, and yarn requirements based on gauge and hand circumference. Exactly. So, so she's done a similar thing to Anne in that she's got these charts mm -hmm. where no matter what yarn you've got in your stash, you can build a pair of mittens yeah. out of them. And then she's got all the how-tos, you know, how to do swatches for mittens, how to do fingers, how to do thumbs, how to cast on, how to put stitches on a holder. Mm -hmm. It's all here. So whether you want to follow a pattern or you want to invent your own, yeah. this is the book to have. So yeah. it's another one of these kind of, I call it a how-to book. I love reference books, yeah. I think. And the fact that she's popped patterns in here too is just a bonus in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Isn't I love great? I love to do mittens. Me too. You know? I spent my first year knitting sweaters, and my second year was knit spending <laughs> knitting mittens. Yeah, and it's great fun. They're practical. They're fun. They're quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Kate is you know the most knowledgeable person. She's um she she is she is a mathematician, mm -hmm. um, but she's you know she does a lot of tech editing. So the the book is done really well. Yeah, and if you're interested in design, she's also got a book on how to um, how to write patterns, basically mm -hmm. how to do your own design work and. And she has the coolest dog. She has a, a rescue hound. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did she bring it with her to TNA? No, no. <laughs> I've just seen pictures on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I feel like I know her because, you know, you see them on, Insta right. on Instagram. So uh, you okay. went to TNA and um, we have some video from that that we'll put into our Places yeah. to Go, People to See playlist. So if you'd like to see more about Barb's visit to mm -hmm. TNA and some interviews with some very interesting people, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have that video up on our uh, website. Yeah. Um, and then we also had Richard DeVries come and stay with us. Yes. And uh, we had a blast with Richard. Mm -hmm. um, we might have had a few of these. <laughs> just saying. Richard is um, an extremely knowledgeable, uh, funny, kind, generous person. Mm -hmm. um, we did some yarn tasting with Richard and I put my camera out and I took some video. So uh, we'll have a little bit of a... Um, um, some excerpts from the Q and A section of that uh, the for you that to watch. Yeah, yeah, they were great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really got good. a yarn tasting, so we got to taste his feed sock base, yeah. which is yeah. really nice. Yeah, and the Lux. We have a little bit of that left in the shop. Yes, if anybody's looking for some. Yeah, and, and um, well, Finn. And yes, Finn. I had a dream last night that I made mittens out of Finn. <laughs> all the all I knit the books in my sleep <laughs> in my dreams because I don't have enough knitting time. So Finn is the worsted weight. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so squishy and lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Feed is really like the colors are just amazing. Yeah. He's a he is an artist. And speaking, speaking of artists, artists, yeah. Okay, I so, think we have to talk about flash. Mode. Okay, so just just quickly. Um, okay. Also, when Richard was here, Carolyn Summer. Feld and her husband yes. were here. There are other dyers. Yes. And Jessie McKittrick uh, stopped in as well. She's right. a designer here in Edmonton. And we have a little interview with Jessie that we're going to add to this podcast. So you can... Speaking of yeah. mittens, I think Jessie might be designing a mitten pattern for us. Oh, I'm cool. Ho I'm hopeful cool. of it. I talked to her about it. Right. And then we're just catching up from Fiber Frolic. We also had a little interview with Hedge Pig. And so we're right. going to add that in too. So um, these How are just short little videos. Anything that's, too, that's longer, we're going to put in another other place mm -hmm. and we'll give you links to that but tell us about this flash month's mob. flash mob here it is yeah okay you guys know we love biscott yarns from montreal from montreal they are the ones that make the striping yarns mm -hmm. and so we are i'm so enthralled 
with their base. It's so soft. I just have never felt anything as soft for socks as it's this. 85 merino, 15 nylon, but mm-hmm. I just I just have to find out. I have to phone them and ask them where they get this because <laughs> this not feels like you. cashmere. <laughs> It does. It's so beautiful. So when we talked to them about our flash mob, we said, you know, we have a favorite place that Cynthia and I like to go. It's called Jasper. Mm -hmm. It's just a little ways from here. Mm -hmm. We've held many knitting retreats there. And it's kind of like our winter retreat, our summertime place to go. Um, when we can get away. Yeah, you can go there any time of the year. You can go mm-hmm. you can camping in the summertime. You can go um, You can go and stay in a hotel in the wintertime. You can go skiing mar- at Marmot Basin. You it's can go cross-country skiing. Right in the middle of the Rocky mm-hmm. Mountains. It's the most beautiful drive up. You drive into Jasper and like you're looking up and, and you keep looking up and up <laughs> and up because the mountains go on forever, mm-hmm. you guys. If, if you get a chance to come to Edmonton, make sure you go to Jasper. Go to Banff. But Jasper is kind of like the quaint version. Yeah, it's not it's as commercial. Not touristy. You'll always see animals when you go there. So there's always uh, sheep. People live right in the park. There's a whole population of people that live there year round. And it's very... Um, it's quaint. Yeah. It is. It is. And so we sent we sent Biscott um, a picture. A picture. Of, of the town. Yeah. The Jasper Town Site. So that's right. And there's one building in Jasper Town Site that has this beautiful red roof on it. Mm-hmm. And that's what they've done here. They've captured this red kind of bricky color. I think it's one of those roofs for the rain, though. Mm. You know the metal ones? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the blue sky behind it. It's just a beautiful picture of the town site. I love the way the red and the blue in this color go together. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. I had yep. to get my nails done that <laughs> So she did. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, oh, man. And then it's got a little flash of gray in it, too. Mm-hmm. Sort of like that slate color. That's right. Yeah, of the I mountains. think you're going to be knitting a sample up, I am. Right? I am. I, I, can't, I can't not do that. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to play with uh, doing some modular knitting with this because I just love the way that striping yarns create their own pattern in yes. a modular knit. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. When Cynthia gets a little swatch done, so, we, we'll put this up. Yep. So Jasper, uh, Jasper Town Site, yep. the newest colorway with uh, our exclusive line with Biscott is coming out on the 20th of July at 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned. Mark that date and time in your calendar and yeah. we'll send you out a, a reminder. If you are um, if you get our newsletter, we send out a reminder of that. Right. It'll be on social media. Yeah. Don't miss out. This is going to be a really, really good one. Yeah. So to sub- subscribe to our newsletter, just visit our website, www.rivercityyarns.com and there's a um, subscription to our yarn bird on every page. Mm-hmm. Um, also, we're going to be posting the names of some winners right? Uh, because we asked you to leave some comments about what you'd like to see. Thank Thank you everybody all the recycling tips i learned a lot well that was last podcast this well, podcast this this one that we're rewarding for is people telling us what they'd like to see oh right yeah, yeah, yeah. on the podcast but you're absolutely right we got some did, great recycling tips we did and so we're going to be giving out some of our podcast on uh buttons right to people as a thank you for um for, leaving. for telling us what you wanted yeah. to see yeah and we will we we heard loud and clear you want to see tours of the shop yes and um, techniques more mm-hmm. techniques and what's in our knitting bags yeah so we're going to do, we're going to be doing some more of those. We wanted to catch up on all the little interviews and videos that we mm-hmm. um, had. We to had in into storage. This one. Yeah, Can you hear first. our phone ring too? <laughs> in the background. That's all right. It's the it's the life of a shop owner, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We're actually closed today. We're podcasting on a Monday. Yeah. And it's uh, over the summer, and so we've taken the opportunity to close the store and have an extra long weekend. Mm-hmm. And it's been so wonderful. <laughs> yes. Uh, especially now that the air conditioning is moving around in the store. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching the podcast. Um, stay tuned for the announcement of the names of the people. Mm-hmm. And um, should we do something else this month? Uh, what do you have in mind? Um, let's see. Oh, like a contest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Um, Maybe tell us what's on your needles right now. As you're watching this podcast, what have you got on your needles? Mm -hmm. Leave a comment in the section. Tell us what you've got on your needles. There's something else I'm always loving to know. Yeah. And that's kind of like, what's your favorite color to knit with? Because we always have favorite colors, right? Yes. 
a lot of people here in Edmonton seem to like blue. Yeah. What's your favorite color? All and right. describe it in detail. And then, um, and then maybe Barb, we could find some really special prizes to to give away. Mm -hmm. We won't tell you something what they colorful. are. Something colorful, yeah. But uh, I'm sure Barb has something that we can uh, reward. We can reward some lucky com commenters with. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, all right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great have a great month. We'll see you again in uh, four weeks. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, how do you come up with the names for the colorways? Uh, sometimes question. they're inspired by areas or things, and sometimes they're named afterwards. So, um, Orioles and Elms um, is the Northern Oriole, which used to be the Baltimore Oriole, <coughs> and Elm trees in the autumn. Um, what's, what is this one? Uh -huh. um, studio tours. I used to be on the studio tour and the, uh, in our area and the colors and you know at that time with the buildings and with the leaves and that that's how that one got inspired. Um, stone wash is supposed to look like of course stone wash denim. Um, yes. And then we have Oz Opal. It's supposed to look like opals. Um, there's one that's called County Road 40. And County Road 40 is an area right by us um, where there must have been a homestead at one time because there's an old cistern still there and the springs run through them and it's crystal clear, really cold water. And the marsh marigolds grow in the area. So it's all green and with a little bit of yellow. So that, and it's a place that I like to just sit and contemplate life. And it's just, it's really tranquil. It's just beautiful and I mean you just get the the mosses the greens and you know just that little sound of the trickling water coming through and it's, I'm lost I mean as you just could sit there for, I could sit there for quite some time but then dying wouldn't get done so yeah. would not be good um, the Times which is supposed to be like a newspaper um, dragon fruit this one went a bit darker um, but it's the colors like the dragon fruit. I mean, I really should have stippled black on it for the seeds in the dragon fruit. Um, <laughs> Do you have aspen good? in there? Sorry? Aspen? Aspen 6. Um, aspen 6 came about because we have uh, aspen trees in the area uh, on our property. We've been planting beech trees and aspen trees, and I think Robert planted six of them. Um, and so that's how that got its name. Sometimes it's bizarre things like um, we're avid... Uh, we listen to the CBC a lot and so something will be on and you know it'll inspire a name because it's, it's just funny how things happen you'll be looking at something they'll be talking and I'll say hey wait a second this sort of relates to you no know, or else uh, I think there's one called Galaxy M385 and they were talking about um, you know I forget some um, space, obviously some space thing they were doing and it tr triggered something in Robert's mind. I have to ask when we're driving something, where did the name come from myself? Because I have to tell you, you know, I have to think of, okay, I need to know behind it. Um, Cass Elliot. So I think it was, this was from a, um, he saw pictures of her and there were certain color clothing she had on. Same thing with one we have called Jesse Norman, um, which is a, was a, um, She's an opera singer from the United States. Um, she specializes in, in German opera, and um, we uh, saw a concert that she was in, or she was singing, and she had on this beautiful blue shimmering dress, and that's the colors that are in the color wave. So, so yeah, so I mean, that's how um, the names come up. Forest of Ferns. So um, we have a lot of ferns in the area, and in the fall when they're dying, so you get the green and you get the gold together. So. So that's how names come about. I'm here with Jessie McKittrich, and she's a designer, a local designer. And um, Jessie, you also know how to spin. That's yes. a pretty amazing. <laughs> how long have you been designing? Oh, um, about uh, five years now. Wow. Yeah, so. And your designs are in magazines primarily, uh, would you say? A good number, yes. Yeah. Is, uh, it, I've had a few published in uh, Interweave Knits, Knit Now magazine out of the UK, mm -hmm. uh, one in Twist Collective, and nice. some through Knitfix, so a few places like that. Fantastic. That's great. And you were at the show yesterday at the Fiber Frolic. 
Yes. Yeah. It's so nice to see your designs. Um, we're chatting with you about maybe some color work designs, helping us with some, some yarn that we're trying to promote. Um, would you say that there's kind of some some sort of designs that are your favorites? Like, do you have a, or do you have a specialty that you like to? Oh, I definitely love color work and cables, mm -hmm. I think. I think oh, the so, best. Um, so color work and cables. Well, not at the same time necessarily, yeah. <laughs> but uh, those are, it's, it, it, they're kind of tied for first place, I mm -hmm. guess would be the thing. Nice. But. What is it about color work that appeals to you? Oh. Um, I just really love working with color, mm -hmm. and I, I love both uh, doing, you can do so many really whimsical things with color work, but you can also uh, do an awful lot of subtle things too, depending what you'd like to do with it. Mm -hmm. So I like um, trying out subtle shadings like you have in a lot of traditional Faroe color work, um, but also a little more modern stuff as well, so mm -hmm. a bit of this and that. Nice. We were talking to Jesse about... Um, uh, her vest. Um, oh yes, the, what it's Windsor the, the Windsor vest. The Windsor vest, yeah. yes. Because we thought that would be a really cool workshop. Right. Yeah, so if you're interested in learning how to do some color work and steaking, stay tuned. We're going to talk to Jesse about doing a workshop for us. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Cynthia. <laughs> I have the same opening every time. Okay. Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> I'm here with Angela. Hello. Angela, your company name is? Hedge Pig Pottery. Hedge Pig Pottery. There's got to be an, a story behind that. Can you tell us what that is? Well, I love hedgehogs, and Britta enables me by making me things that have hedgehogs on them. Um, I read a book. Uh, it was about King Arthur and King Arthur gets turned into all kinds of different critters so that he can learn to be a better king and he's turned into a badger and when he's a badger he comes across this little hedgehog that's rolled up in uh, in a hedge and uh, he goes hedge make and he's bullying this little hedgehog and I think he sort of learns through this interaction that uh, it's not a very good thing to be a bully when you're a king so it's a British name for a hedgehog that's so cute and a great story to boot <laughs> She's also a little bossy too. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sh just show us briefly what you've brought today because you've got some really unique things. Well, you knitters really inspired me, inspired me to do fun stuff. And so I did sort of a yarn bowl. He's going to photo bomb you there. Mm -hmm. With a pig. Um, with a pig and so most of my things oh, are at, kind of look at the turn it right round most of my look things are kind of everyday inspired like i love british pottery and so that's kind of what inspired me so yarn bowl also this little sort of hook and knitting needle holder so it's got various size holes oh my that you can god that's cute crochet hooks and stuff sorted and then various different buttons, buttons. for your amazing projects Oh my gosh. And are those made out of clay or ceramic? They, or? They're clay and they go through exactly the same process as all my other stuff. My mugs and everything go through. So they're fired first, bisque fired. Once they come out, then they're painted with a glaze, hand painted. And, and then back they're in fired again? again uh, in, uh, you know, in the same heat as cone six. So, you know, close to about 2,800 2, degrees. Wow. I also do the little beads for all the other makers out there who. Uh, like to use them as, I, I'm not a jeweler, but some people can do amazing things with them. And Britta's used them as zipper pulls and stuff as well. Oh. Each one has like all the little pieces hand put on there and then hand painted on there as well. Such personality too. Tell me a little bit about this one. What's this one? That one I made specifically for the Edmonton Fiber Frolic. Uh, I just wanted knitters to sort of express themselves. I think it'd be fun to come up with some humorous ideas on that one too. But. Oh my gosh, you're truly creative. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you. Thanks, Angela.